In the last section, we talked about a line and we said, let me draw one for you just as a quick review. And we said the line has arrows on both ends, which means they keep going, keep going forever and ever. So how did we label the line? We labeled it with at least two points. Actually, a line has at least two points. We label it with exactly two points. So if I have two points on here, even if I put like, a C right here. I can name this several different things. I could uh, name it line AB. And remember we put the arrows on it like this. I could have named it AC, CB. I could have gone backwards and named it CA or BC or BA. So you actually have six different ways you could have named this line. But right now, and, and the key to this was understanding that it kept on going in both directions. It didn't start at A and end at B. It meant that this line had two points on it, and all we have to do is label just two points that were actually on the line. And I could have picked any. If I had a thousand points on here, well, I wouldn't have a thousand because I'd run out of letters. But let's say I had 20 points all labeled on this line right here, I would just pick two of them and name it line whatever, whatever, A, B, C, B, B, C, just as long as they pick two points. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to talk about. Let's just make it look like this. And watch what I'm going to do here on the ends. I'm not going to put arrows. I'm actually going to put a point here on the end. And uh, let's just call this point P and point R. Now, this thing right here is not a line because it doesn't keep on going. Okay, The arrows indica indicates that it would have kept on going. This doesn't have arrows on it. So we call this not a line, but it's part of a line, or it's a line segment. Right, that's what we're going to call this when it has when it stops, when it has a start and it has a stop. We call this a line segment. Now, if I wanted to uh, label this thing, this is how I'd label it. Just like we did a line. Remember, it didn't matter. I could have called this A, B, or B, A. Same thing here. I could call this P, R, or I could call it R, P. But we don't put a little arrow, we don't put the arrows on the end of this line because it doesn't keep on going in both directions. What we do is we just put a little line segment over top of it. We don't put dots on the ends of it. We just leave it like this, okay, no arrows. That means this is a line segment. It means it has a beginning and it has an end. Now, when I say beginning and end, it doesn't mean that the beginning has to start on the left-hand side and the end has to start on the right-hand side because it could have been diagonal, could have been up and down, but it just, one end of this line segment is one point and one end of the line segment is another point. So uh, that's how we do it. So we could have called it um, line segment PR, or I could have called it line segment RP. And it doesn't make any difference whatsoever on how we label these things. Um, let's talk about these points that are on the end. And uh, they came up with this name, and it sounds like it makes sense. Since the points are on the end, they call this an end point. And they're both end points. So this right here is an end point. And same thing with this point right here. This is also an end point. So we don't really have a beginning point, okay? Even though I said it starts and it ends, we just call them both end points, all right? There's really no start to it um, because it, there's no direction uh, as far as what's first and what's second, all right? But we just call those the end points. So that's pretty important. So line segment, we're gonna be doing the line segments a lot. In fact, we can actually measure line segments. And that's what we're going to talk about today. If you look at the top of that lesson, it called it a uh, linear measure. So linear meaning line and measure, we're going to actually measure the length of that line. I think I'm going to keep all my lines horizontal because I've got a little ruler that I'm going to pull out here. And I want to, I'll tell you what, we'll put a little endpoints on here. And I want to be able to measure it. And if I made them like diagonal or at an angle, uh, it'd make it a little bit harder to measure. So actually, let me grab my ruler. You can't see it, but it's off to the side. And there it is right there. Check it out. I believe this one is um, this ruler right here. If you look at it, look at the, let's blow this up just a little bit so you can see a little bit closer. I'll go back so that my line is in the frame. But if you look at it, let's count how many uh, places are in between the 0 and the 1. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's broken up into 10s. So this is not in inches. All right, we'll talk about that in a second. But, oops, that took me all the way to the top. Let's scooch down a little bit. 
There we go. All right, so this is broken down into uh, into tens, and that would be the metric system. The metric system is based on the number ten. So these would be centimeters. So from zero to one to two to three, four, five, six, and so on. These would be centimeters. So if I wanted to measure out how long this uh, line segment is, I would put the zero right at the end point. Again, let's blow this up just a little bit. And let's scooch it so we can see. All right. So I've put the zero right at the end point. And if I want to measure how long this line segment is, it starts here at zero, and then it comes all the way down to here. And it looks like it's a little bit more than 10, about right there. So if this is in, if it's broken up into 10 segments, each one would be 1 tenth or 0.1. All right, so it's 10.1. So if I wanted to measure this, I would say the measure, and let's make this a little bit smaller. I would say the measure of this is 10.1 centimeters. Let's do this. Let's make this A and make this B. Now we could say this. We could say the length of line segment AB, all right, uh, is, you could write is, or you could probably put an equal sign there if you wanted to, is what? 10.1 centimeters. CM is the prefix for centimeters. So you could say it like that. Actually write the word length of and then line segment. See how we put the little segment over top of it is 10.1 centimeters. Well, here's another way you could write it. And this is a little bit, um, it's just a little bit easier. You don't have to write so much stuff. So if I wanted to actually find the measure of a line segment, what I would do is this. I would just put a, B, and nothing on the top of it. If it just says A, B, and there's no line segment or no line or anything on the top of it, that means the length of, or sometimes the book will say the measure of that line segment, okay? It's a slight difference. It's a very subtle thing, and most people don't catch on to it um, until a lot later, but that's what this means. So let's get it now. This AB means that it's the length of, all right? So if I don't have any line over top of it, if I was to read this off, I would say the length of AB, or you could say the measure of line segment AB. And then I could just put an equal sign here and say 10.1 and then centimeters, all right? And that's how you would uh, describe the length of this line segment. Let's do another measurement. And again, I'm just going to make this horizontal. It doesn't have to be horizontal like this. Uh, let's make it a little thicker. Okay, just like that should be good. And I have another uh, ruler here. Look at that one. Now, it's got two things on here. Look at the top. It even labels it. The top is centimeters and the bottom is inches. Let's just measure this one in inches. So I'm going to take my ruler. I'm going to put it over here. And I'm going to scooch it over so that zero right here is right at the edge of the line I'm trying to measure. Let's blow this up just a little bit. When I say blow it up, I mean enlarge it just a little bit. Okay, and uh, let's measure how long this one. Well, let's take a look. Remember we counted up, we said there's 10 spaces in between zero and one, so that would be in metric, and that would each one of those would be a centimeter. These are in inches. So this is zero inches, this is one inch, obviously. Now, how do we measure inches? Well, look, if we go halfway, we do, we we break basically break it up into halves. So we're taking from zero to one, we break it up into half. So this would be a half inch right here. And uh, let's write that in there. Okay, so this would, oops, that's, let's go back to my thinner <laughs> ruler. That would be a half inch right here. Okay, because it's halfway in between. Now watch, if I take half of a half, that would be a quarter. So this one right here would be a quarter inch right there. And then if I take half of that from zero to a quarter, half of a quarter is an eighth. So this little part right here would be eighth of an inch. That's an eighth. It's a little, little thin, but that's an eighth of an inch. That's a quarter of an inch. Well, let's do this. So each one of the small ones is an eighth. So this is one eighth, and then this would be two eighths, but what is two eighths reduced to? One fourth. This would be three eighths. That doesn't reduce, so I'm going to call that, if I could right that would be three eighths this one right here this would be four eighths again what does four eighths reduce to it reduces to one half this would be five eighths 
doesn't reduce. This would be 6 eighths, but 6 eighths reduces to 3 fourths. So that one would be 3 fourths. This one right here, remember this is 5 eighths, 6 eighths. This would be 7 eighths. That doesn't reduce. And this would be 8 eighths, and 8 eighths reduces to 1. So those that's how we figure out what each of these little measurements uh, actually are. So let's, uh, now this may not end up, if I, if I looked at this, see I just drew that line just a, a random length. It doesn't end right on one of the things, okay, but we'll get the one that's closest. It looks like it's closest to this one, so we'll just round it to this one right here. And so we want to figure out how long this line is. So what do we have? Well, it goes to three, and then it's bigger than a half. And remember what the, remember we go in eights. This is one eighth, two, three, four, five, six eighths, but six eighths reduces to three fourths. So the length of this would be three and three fourths. If I gave this, uh, let's say I put an endpoint here and just called it, I don't know, um, C, and I put an endpoint here and I called it D, so they could ask you this. They might just say equals and then leave a blank and maybe even put a question mark right there. This might be a problem on your, on your homework. It would just say CD equals blank. What does it mean? Remember, when there's no little line segment over top of it, it means the length of the line segment. So what is the length of line segment CD? So the length of line segment CD, we already measured it, it's 3 and 3 fourths. So I would just say 3 and 3 fourths. Now we wouldn't just say 3 and 3 fourths because it's not 3 and 3 fourths inches, it's not 3 and 3, or I'm sorry, it is 3 and th 3 fourths inches. It's not 3 and 3 fourths uh, centimeters. It's not 3 and 3 fourths miles. You've got to make sure you put the units down. You can't just say 3 and 3 fourths because you've got a couple different ways to measure this. So it's in inches, so we write it in inches. Um, I N and then a period is how we abbreviate inches. The next thing they want you to know is uh, this word. It's between. And you're like, well, of course, I know what between is. I know what it means for something to be between something else. But sometimes in geometry, when you talk about lines, sometimes people get a little confused. So let's just make sure we keep, uh, get this straight. So here's a line. It keeps on going in both directions. Let's put some points in here. We'll put, I'll just put three points in here. We'll just call it ABC just to make it simple. All right, if I was talking about what is between something, what point is between two other points, you guys could probably figure that out right on your own. So point B, look at it, point B is between A and C. Now some people think when I say it's between it, they think it means it has to be right in the middle, divide it right into equal parts, but it doesn't, okay? It just has to be somewhere in between. Now if I say in between, what does that mean? That means that if I take AB, line segment AB, or let's make it the length of line segment AB, and if I added it to line segment BC, see what I'm doing right here? I took, let's change colors here. Oops, see daisy, sorry. <laughs> uh, let's say I took this little segment AB right here, and then I added it to line segment BC that one right there. So I took that reddish looking color and I added it to the green one. What would they add up to be? Well, they would add up to be a longer line segment. So you took a shorter one and you took one that's a little bit longer than that one. But if I added them together, I'm going to get something that's a lot bigger. All right. And what did I get? I got this whole thing right there. And what is that line segment right there? Well, it's AC. A, C. Notice this has a B in it. See, A, B. This has a B in it. B, C. This B and this B, that means it's between the A and the C. So if I added up this little segment with this segment right here, then it would add up to the whole entire thing, which would be AC. Now you could look at it another way. You could say, all right, what if I started off with AC and I took away minus line segment BC, or the measure of, or the length of line segment BC. So if I started off with the whole entire thing and I took away this BC right here, what's going to be left over? AB is going to be left over. So that's the whole idea of betweenness or something is between something else. Okay. So I hope that look, makes a little bit of sense to you. It doesn't have to be dead in the middle, this B, to be between. 
It just has to be A has to be on one side of it and C has to be on the other side of it. If that's true, then B is in between. I couldn't say A is in between anything because I don't know anything on this side of A. I haven't labeled any points. Now there are points over here, but I just haven't labeled anything over here to the left of point A. So B is the only one that's between. Now what if I stuck another letter in here? What could I do? Well, I could say a bunch of things. I could say that D is between B and C. But what else is D between? Well, D is also between A and C. All right, so I could have said that. We've already talked about B. B could be between A and C, but watch, I could also say this, that B, point B, is between A and D. All right, so, you know, you can have a whole bunch and there's a lot of bunch of things that are, that are between. So that's basically the idea of between and they, in the book, they say between, they put two ends in there? Yep, betweenness, okay? It's just describing the nature of being between. Okay, here's more of a practical um, application of this betweenness thing that we were talking about. We started off this lesson measuring things, and that's what we've done right here, okay? It's already been pre-measured, and somebody measured it and said it's 8.4 centimeters. This is 3.9 centimeters, okay? It's not necessarily drawn to scale. I just kind of sketched it out by hand. But we'll take their word for it that that's what the length of these segments are. Now, what they're going to ask you to do, they might ask you to find like this, JL. That's all they're going to say. They'll give you this picture, and they're going to say, find JL. But it's not just JL. Remember, it doesn't have anything over top of it. So what does that mean? Well, that means it's the measure or the length of line segment JL. Well, JL goes from here all the way to there. That's what you're trying to find. So how do you find that whole entire thing? Well, you know this part of it, you know K is in between. You know this part is 8.4, this part is 3.9. What do they do to make up the whole entire total thing, the whole JL? Well, they add up, don't they? So if I wanted to find the length of line segment JL, I would take 8.4 and add it to 3.9. And let's see, that's 11, that's 13 carry, that's 12.3 in centimeters so keep it in centimeters so that's all there is to it so basically it's not that hard to do you could add those very easily you just have to understand what this notation means it means find the length of JL and you have to understand you have to look at it and understand okay I just add those together and I could find that whole entire thing so that whole entire thing would be 12.3 centimeters Here's another little example. And so I've got my line segment right here. It's a uh, line segment AC is the whole thing. It's broken up into AB and BC. And what they're going to ask you to do is they're going to ask you to find something. So let's see what it says. It'll say on this problem, it says find AB. Now again, they don't have any line segment over top of it. So it means find the measure of, find the length of line segment AB. So this right here is what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find out how long that is. Well, let's see what they give you this time. They don't give you the two parts like they did earlier. This time they give you the whole entire length and they give you part, okay? They give you one of the segments, one of these two segments. So if you have the whole thing, what do you do with that 5.8 in order to find out what's left over? Well, in order to find out what's left over, it's just like making change when you uh, have money and you're getting change from a dollar or something like that. What do you do? You take it away. It's a subtraction problem. So we take the whole thing, which is 13.2, and we take away that segment, that 5.8. And so when we do that subtraction, we get a 7.4. And that's, oh, well, it's not centimeters, it's meters. So it's 7.4 meters. So it's a little bit different, but it's real close to what we did before, except this time they give you the whole thing. We take away this part, that's what's left over. You could always double check and add this one to this one right here, and it'll come out to 13.2. Okay, here's the last one that we're going to do on this. This look, looks a little different because they have a variable in here. Now we're going to use some algebra, and we're going to do this a lot this year. We're going to have a picture set up, you know, something like this, depending on the topic, and we're going to figure out what kind of equation are we going to have to make out of this, our situation. So it's the same idea as what we've been talking about, that betweenness thing. So if you look at this, 
this xy, this 3a right here, this 3a goes from here to here, and the 14 goes from this point to this point right here from y to z. So what do these two things do to make the whole entire thing? Just like we've talked about before, they add up to make the whole thing. So they don't tell you the whole thing is like, you know, 27 or something like that. They tell you the whole thing is 5a minus 4. That's what this little thing is right here. It says from this mark above the z or x and this mark above the z, everything in between is 5a minus 4. This part is 14, this part is 3a. So what do we do? We're going to take this little segment and this medium segment, and what do they do? Those two add up to make the whole entire thing. And this right here is the whole entire thing. So let's set up our uh, equation. We've got 3a plus 14, and what does that equal? They add up to the whole entire line segment, and they kind of told us the whole entire line segment. They kind of told us, because we don't know what a is. So it's 5a minus 4. And now, what do we have to do? We took our geometry, that was our geometry, and we turned it into an algebra problem. We're going to be doing that all year long. Okay, so get used to it now because you're going to be doing this, this sort of thing, this whole procedure, okay, all year long. And uh, once you get used to it, it actually gets to be pretty easy. So now all we have to do is just solve for a. I'll just do the algebra very quick for you. Uh, you could do it a couple ways, but I would do it like this. I would subtract a 3a from both sides. That way this will cancel out. And then in the same step, let's take this minus 4. Since I have the a on the right side, I'm going to take this minus 4 and put it on the left side. I do that by adding a 4. All right, and so the minus 4 and the, <clears throat> excuse me, the positive 4 will add up to 0. 5a minus 3a is 2a. And then 14 plus 4 is 18. Divide both sides by 2. And then a is equal to 9. And that would be your answer. Actually, let me see. If you look at the problem, I didn't write it down, but it says find the value of a, which we did. Okay, so I circled it, but it also says find the value of xy. So they say xy is equal to, we'll just put a blank there. So where is xy? xy is right here. It's this part from here to here. And what's the value of it? It's 3a. The measurement is 3a. Well, I know what a is now, so how do I find xy? I take 3 times a, which I just found, which is 9. And what is the length or the measure of xy? It's 27. So xy is equal to 27. And there's the two answers. Make sure you read the problem because Sometimes you get used to just solving for the variable and you think you're finished. But sometimes they don't even ask you to solve for the variable. They just say solve for line seg or the length of line segment x, y. So it's important that you read the instructions very carefully. All right, I hope that helps out. And uh, good luck tomorrow when you work on this lesson. We'll see you.